Republicans in the United States say U.S. President Barack Obama has a lot more work to do to convince them that the deal over Iran's nuclear program is a good one. They say they're campaigning for votes to veto the deal in Congress. But the Obama administration is doing its best to sell the deal, with Secretary of State John Kerry holding closed-door talks to persuade legislators not to fight it. Even as he was speaking, a so-called Stop Iran rally was kicking off in New York. The demonstration in Times Square is intended to show solidarity with Israel and its critical stance on the deal. U.S. Defense Secretary Ash Carter has met with the King of Saudi Arabia as he continues a tour aimed at easing fears in the region. Riyadh has had a lukewarm response to the agreement, and during the meeting, King Salman expressed reservations about how it would be enforced. Rosen Jordan has this update from Washington, D.C. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry was one of three Obama administration officials to brief members of Congress behind closed doors on Wednesday. He, the Energy Secretary Ernest Moniz, and the Treasury Secretary Jacob Liu talked to legislators about the deal to make Iran give up its nuclear weapons ambitions. However, some members of Congress who came out to speak reporters in between those sessions said that they either had real skepticism that the plan could work or that they were hoping that the president and his team would make a stronger argument for trying to make this deal go through, not just through Congress, but on the international stage as well. Let's cross now to New York and Kristen Salumi, who's at that rally against this nuclear deal. Hi there, Kristen. Who is behind this rally? And all the rest of them, if they say to their colleagues, this is our civil rights issue. We want our children to live. And that's Hi, Kristen, can you hear me? It's very loud at that rally. Who's organized this rally? Very loud here. The way Ed Koch punished. Yes, indeed, it is very loud and it's a very large crowd. Uh, uh, organizers have estimated up to 10,000 people are here. Uh, we have no way of confirming that, but certainly thousands of people are here. It's billed as a grassroots, bipartisan, interfaith rally, uh, but it is organized by a coalition of Jewish groups, groups dozens of Jewish groups, who put this event together. And uh, we are hearing from speakers. Uh, from all backgrounds here today, but right now I want to introduce you to somebody who's here attending the rally. His name is Jesse. Uh, Jesse, uh, tell us about why you came out here today and why you are against this deal. Well, it's very, very obvious why anybody would be against this deal because Iran has been our enemy for 36 years. Iran has been screaming through these negotiations that they want to destroy America, that they want to destroy Israel. Even after our moronic Secretary of State, John Kerry, and our foolish president uh, negotiated this deal, Khomeini was still standing up and saying that he wanted to uh, bring death to America. So uh, there is really no sensible reason why anyone should believe that Iran could be trusted with weapons of any type. So you're asking Congress not to approve this deal. If they do that, there will be no inspections. Iran will hold on to its nuclear material. Then what? Then what does the United States do? What the United States should do, look, the only reason Iran was at the negotiating table is because the sanctions were working. We need to double them, triple them, quadruple them, and bring Iran to its knees in order for Iran to realize that we are not going to submit to their bullying. Iran is the biggest terrorism, sponsor of terrorism throughout the world. And unless you're living under a rock, look, let me put it this way. As you said to your audience a moment ago, there are thousands and thousands of people here. This, I, I see, like you said, there are Jewish groups, but there are all kinds of people here. This is not a, a Republican, Democrat, conservative, uh, liberal uh, agenda. I, I would imagine that most of your audience on this network are Muslim and very, very liberal Americans. Their children won't die any differently than my children will or yours. Their cities aren't going to be protected when Iran has ballistic missiles. So if the inspection, uh, if this deal falls apart, the rest of the world has agreed to lift their sanctions. Say, I'm sorry? The rest of the world has agreed to this deal. The, the, European powers who negotiated this deal have agreed to stop their sanctions. 
can we go back? Do you think it's possible to go look, back at this look, point? Look, America, if it wasn't for our stupid, stupid, horrible president, America would have some clout like we used to have. And that's the only reason that these other countries are doing what they're doing, because our president has no cojones, as we say in New York. Our president is a wimp. And so is John Kerry. And so is Clinton. And that's why these countries are going along with it, because America is going along with it. If America showed some strength, then they wouldn't be doing this. Okay, Jesse, thank you very much for your input on that. That's Jesse Marlboro, obviously a very passionate uh, attendee of this rally, as are many people that we've spoken to here. Of course, President Obama takes a, a different approach on these issues and says that by enacting this deal, Iran will actually be further from a nuclear weapon, and we will be closer uh, in the West, will be closer to military action. Obviously, uh, that is hot debated and disputed here. Kristen, thanks very much. Kristen Salumi, live for us in New York. Joining us now from Los Angeles is Middle East analyst Arish Aramesh. Uh, welcome to the program. We had that very loud protest in New York against this uh, nuclear deal. How hard are President uh, Obama and uh, Secretary of State John Kerry having to work to try and uh, convince Congress that this is a good deal? The administration has been lobbying the Hill for some time now. Uh, today and yesterday, we had cabinet level secretaries, uh, Secretary of Energy, Secretary of uh, uh, the Treasury, Jack Lew, and uh, John Kerry, the Secretary of State, uh, going to the House side, the Senate side, and also talking to members behind closed doors, whether in committee or at their offices, trying to convince not necessarily Republicans who are going along with the Republican majority leadership in both the House and the Senate voting against the deal, but trying to convince those few Democrats, people from their own party, that can vote for the, uh, with the administration and prevent perhaps a veto-proof majority, which is two-thirds, that's 67 votes in the Senate and 290 or 291 votes in the House to prevent a veto-proof majority. It's going to be a tough sell, but again, I think the Obama administration has figured out the math. For the most part, in the Senate, it's going to be a tough sell, but on the, on the House side, with the help of uh, House Minority Leader Democrat Nancy Pelosi, who's been a very good ally of the Obama administration, I think they have enough votes to uh, muster support and prevent a veto-proof majority in the House. How much of the pushback in Congress is because of Israel's objections to the deal? Of course, plenty of the objection that is coming from the House and the Senate uh, and many other concerned citizens is coming from, it's because of Israel. Israel and the, and the government of Pr uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has been against this deal from the very get-go. So there has been some tension, but a very recent poll conducted by the Christian Science Monitor or published by the Christian Science Monitor showed that an overwhelming majority of American Jews were actually in favor of this deal. And uh, the overwhelming majority of Israeli Jews and Israelis were against the deal. So you see American Jews here who happen to vote more with the Democratic Party. They happen to be more progressive on issues. They are for the deal uh, by an overwhelming majority. On the other hand, we know that both the uh, Saudi lobby in the United States, other Arab lobbies in the Persian Gulf, in the United States, such as uh, the lobby of Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE, have been very active trying to prevent this deal from going through. Chief amongst them, though, has been Israel. So we'll see this sort of thing play out. But again, John Kerry, as, as, as the key man uh, uh, ahead of this deal, is trying to get and put and rally all the troops to make sure that this deal doesn't get vetoed. Or at least, if it's vetoed, which certainly will be vetoed, is not overridden by a majority, a two-thirds majority in Congress. Arash uh, Aramesh, thanks very much for joining us.